afternoon, good evening, wherever you are today. This is James Bowman III again with our marital and family encouragement. Hashtag M A F E. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is uh, March 25th. It's about 8.33 p.m. on the Central time zone in the U.S. here. And this evening, I want to speak with you just on the topic very briefly. Be careful what do you ask for. Okay? Be careful what you ask for. So, I have a friend, young lady, and she wanted to be in charge. Now, it, it, don't take it like it sounds, not for boastful. She loved people. She loved helping people. And she wanted to be in charge because she wanted to do some good. What she did not know was that being the leader or being in charge makes you a target. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, uh, part of leadership is being targeted. When, when you are the leader, people under your, um, kind of your constituents, I'll call them, will basically have two ways of dealing with you. They will either get with what you're trying to do and try to support the program, and then there are those who will thwart your progress. And ladies and gentlemen, th this is nothing new. Uh, this happened all throughout the Bible. There was pressure from within and pressure from without. And then there's the internal pressure with yourself where you wonder, are you adequate enough to accomplish the task at hand? Mm -hmm. Look at Moses. Uh, Moses, uh, you know, called the children of Israel a stiff-necked people. And of course, uh, the children of Israel, as most of us in the church have issues and, and, and drove Moses crazy uh, to, to such a point that Moses struck the rock when he was supposed to speak to it. And this is why we must be prayerful when we want to do things, because God will know whether we're able or not to handle a certain task uh, where we are in our Christian experience. Because, see, ladies and gentlemen, I listen, I can testify. We can spend years outside of the will of God trying to make something work that God did not intend for us. Or those things that he did intend, we want it too early. And I am a witness that some things you cannot learn quickly. It takes time. You've got to mature. And so as I shared with this young lady, be careful what you ask for, because when you become the leader, you become the focal point of people. And ladies and gentlemen, in one of the other talks, uh, we, we shared uh, the notion that this, you know, this isn't, it's not the people that are the problem. It's Satan. This is spiritual warfare. And as the leader, you need to know that uh, the collective is paramount not your feelings. Your feelings don't matter as, as, as the leader. It is your job to ensure that the collective is doing well, that the organization is doing well. Proverbs 29, 18 says that where there is no vision, people perish. My, my, uh, my daughter, I mean, she's not the young lady I was speaking of, but, but my daughter wants to, uh, own her own company. She's, a, she's quite a, an awesome designer. She's a, an incredible seamstress. So she decided, you know, she's taking up marketing in college. Uh, she's a junior uh, because she's attempting to finish so she can market her own products. And I shared with her, I said, sweetheart, when you are going to own a business, you must have a vision, something that you want to accomplish. And then everything that you do in your, in your experience, in terms of your education or or moves that you make, must be going toward attacking that vision. 
because your job as the leader is to ensure that the organization remains one of integrity. Because ladies and gentlemen, when you operate it with integrity, eventually you won't have to chase the money. The money will chase you. Because the community will know that you are a person of standards. And that if they go with your company, they will get honesty. They will get integrity. Now, there are people in your organization that will try you. And you will have to make some difficult decisions. But one thing that I've learned over the years is that if God has placed you somewhere, and if he has put you in a position of prominence, then it is your obligation to bless those under your purview and God will take care of the rest. What is that? How does that look? Treat your employees kindly. Understand when they have challenges, uh, be flexible to help them out, serve them. Because again, ladies and gentlemen, it's not about your feelings as the leader. It's about the people who you serve. Leadership, ladies and gentlemen, is about service. It's not about my feelings. It is about their needs. And listen, this, this idea is my idea. This comes straight out of the Bible. One of the most amazing things to me is when Jesus was on the cross, you would think he would be thinking about his own pain, but yet he stopped. And he not only forgave, he looked to save. What, what an amazing testimony of not caring about self, but caring about someone else who is under, under, in duress or under distress. That thing has always been powerful to me. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ has left an incredible example for us to follow. Those of us who are in leadership understand that when you take on the leadership, uh, you are to serve others. That is your obligation. And you pray and put your feelings to the side because it's not about you as the leader. It is about those who you lead. Mm -hmm. So I shared that with a young lady and also I shared it with my daughter she, since she wants to uh, own a company and be an entrepreneur. That is absolutely uh, something that is admirable, something uh, to press toward. But understand that when you are the leader, there are certain characteristics that you must uh, maintain. And God can help us because some of these qualities uh, have to come from Jehovah. You know, because our flesh wants to get in the way when someone says something to us and we want to get angry. Uh, listen, <laughs> I am so guilty of that. And I've had to ask forgiveness from the Lord. Say, why, why would you speak to someone that, like that? James, you claim to be a Christian. You should have be more prayerful and be more spiritual so that you can communicate with those that are under your purview with kindness. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's our talk for this evening. Again, be careful what you ask for. Uh, we've got to pray and know where God wants us. We don't want to jump out ahead of God and try to get somewhere where we don't belong. And at the appropriate time, if it is meant for us, there's nobody that can keep us from it because God will mandate it and it will come to pass. God bless you. You have a great evening. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Let me show you. Let me show you.